This is my advice to aspiring musicians. I've reached an age and a stature where young musicians frequently come to me for career advice. Actually, young musicians have almost no interest in career advice from me, but I get asked to speak at schools a lot, so they're forced to sit quietly. I also offer my completely unsolicited opinion to anyone unwise enough to talk about the music business within earshot of me in a public place. In short, I am a veritable fountain of information about the music business that almost no one wants to hear, and the few kids who do seem interested are only trying to figure out what not to do. No kid ever starts out thinking, I hope my band is moderately successful like that old guy's band. But the truth is that people like me, graying, semi, sort of famous, still hanging around trying to look busy, we're the source of the best advice you can get. If you asked Lady Gaga to give advice to aspiring musicians, she'd say something inspiring like, keep pushing and striving until you reach your dream. All massively successful people are full of these platitudinous horse feathers because it's what passes for wisdom in show business. Lady Gaga herself kept striving until she reached her dream. So she's never reflected on what might happen if a person kept striving and didn't reach their dream. People who become famous in youth really do believe they just worked harder or had bigger dreams or were exceptionally more talented. But the entertainment business is a meat grinder of most people's dreams. Famous entertainer and comedian Colin Powell once said, There are no secrets to success. It is the result of preparation, hard work, and learning from failure. What Colin Powell should have said is, success in the army comes from unquestioningly following orders for 40 years until everyone else washes out, gets court-martialed for war crimes, or dies. I only wish the music business worked this way. So although big stars have no idea why they became successful, they're too embarrassed or egotistical to admit that it was mostly a product of luck and pluck, and sometimes other activities that rhyme with luck and pluck. Most musicians toil in obscurity, even the ones who keep pushing and striving until they literally weep themselves to death. And if your dream is to be universally praised as a groundbreaking auteur, you might have better luck farting rainbows at the moon. That's not to say that there aren't thousands of rewarding and spectacular careers in music, but almost every kid I meet has the same short list of goals. Blow everyone's mind, reinvent music, and then show up to their high school reunion riding a gold-plated unicorn. <laughs> One of the places you see this kind of hubris on display is in the first few interviews with a fledgling artist. Being interviewed is hard because you don't want to sound stupid, which you surely are, and you haven't figured out yet how to make your arrogance sound like quiet confidence and your fear sound like humility. Many young musicians make the mistake of taking it out on the interviewer. Obviously, this junior staffer from the Willamette Week is a high-ranking member of the showbiz Politburo. A young female rock star of my acquaintance sardonically tweeted the other day, when will rock journalists start asking dudes what it's like to be a boy in an indie rock band? Hmm. She'd obviously just been interviewed, probably by a college kid with a podcast, and took to Twitter afterwards less to issue a feminist battle cry than to call attention to her new power, humble bragging, I'm totally being interviewed, but I don't like it. It's so exhausting to be famous, but I'm keeping it street because I point out hypocrisy. Fight the power. Listen, no one's got more beef with, uh, than me with bad interviewers. A few weeks ago, a Seattle magazine blithely described me, an inveterate bachelor, as married, which made my girlfriends furious. <laughs> I personally have 50 questions I wish people would stop asking me, starting with, when's the new Long Winters record I prepaid going to be finished? <laughs> and ending with, what's it like to not be a woman in a band? but my frustration is tempered by gratitude that anyone cares enough to be asking questions at all. It's rare that an artist remains fascinating to writers. Most of us only get a small window of attention. I've seen plenty of young bands enjoying a taste of success, loaf through their first few interviews with an attitude of, I don't like the way you phrase that question, man. Hmm. They only later discovered those were the only interviews they were ever going to do. Music writers aren't engaged in a conspiracy of bitterness and bad taste. They're just young people trying to make sense of the world. 
When a guy asks, what's it like to be a woman in a rock band? He's really asking, what's it like to be a woman? <laughs> Seriously, he wants to know. <laughs> Women are mysterious to him. <laughs> Likewise, when he asks, what's your wildest tour experience? He's asking, do you ever have sex with young writers? <laughs> And when he asks, what's your favorite place to play? He's practically begging you, please tell me you get to have sex with music writers a lot of exotic places. <laughs> That's how all interviews go. Unless, of course, you get one of those what's your favorite color interviewers who are really asking, are you ready to be blown away by my off-the-wall interview? <laughs> don't complain, don't sneer. Just tell your story how you want it told. I hate to see young musicians get buried under waves of disappointment at the start of their careers because a bad tour and a few bits of bad press crush their dreams. You can't expect too much respect from the world right out of the gate. Sometimes you push and strive and never meet a gold-plated unicorn. But it doesn't mean you're not talented and might not have a long career if you keep at it. Often it only means that unicorns aren't real. And anyway, if you gold-plated one, it would die. John Roderick. Thank you. You've been listening to a snippet of Livewire, the radio variety show that's like a chew toy for your brain. For more information about the show or to download our podcast, visit livewireradio.org. <laughs>